David, there is a clarion call worldwide to spend money to put people to work. How will the World Bank affect that policy? Hi, Tom. Good morning. Uh, we're, the World Bank is adding resources where it can uh, and also targeting the resources to where the most impact can be can be felt. Uh, for some countries, that means supporting core uh, core businesses, either in the public sector or the private sector, ones that if they stopped operation, it would be it would be giantly harmful. But in many countries, uh, the, the focus is also on getting cash to people, either through a social safety net or through uh, uh, through income kind transfers. Uh, we're dealing with countries that are often on the brink of extreme poverty for tens of millions of people. So that's the focus right now, quickly moving on both the health crisis and the alleviation of, right. of poverty, setting up systems that will work into the future. One of the interesting things that's happening is the differentiation of countries. What financial markets are doing is, in effect, looking at some and saying they're going to be able to move forward with the policies that they've got or that they'll be able to put in place. And so that becomes a powerful positive force. Right. What is the constraint you have? I mean, our Eric Martin uh, writes encyclopedic on the World Bank, and he's looking at your credit rating and some of the financial ratios of the World Bank. But I want to know, David Malpass, what's the day-to-day -day constraint to deploying money to those very poor countries? Uh, yes. Well, um, we're, we're in a, a better position uh, because of a recent capital increase in both IBRD and IFC, two of the big parts of the bank, and a large replenishment of the uh, of IDA that was done in December. Uh, and so, by 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 chance, by coincidence, by good fortune, uh, the bank has uh, resources. And so, the constraint uh, we're, 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 we are. Uh, planning to deploy $160 billion uh, over the next 15 months. That sounds small by, by what's going on in developed countries, but if you think about the de developing countries, these are large-scale resources, very welcome by the countries, and so the, the constraint, the challenge is to, uh, to not go over exposure limits for individual countries. Some countries are at their, at their credit limits. Let's think of it that way. But the bigger issue is what's in their program. They want to create confidence. And so what we're trying to do is have programs that show the world, show their own people, uh, that there's confidence in the recovery on the other side. One of the most important things that we can do in that is transparency. We need transparency both on the health side, meaning what is the situation for COVID, uh, also on the debt side. What are the contracts that yep. the governments are entering into? And that proves to be a, a major challenge that pe people all around the world are working on in order to make more transparency on the, on the debt that's out there. President Malpass, let's talk about that because you understand how delicate this moment is for many of these economies and countries that you work with. What we need right now is grants and not loans. And what we need for a whole range of countries is debt relief. Can you talk to us about the scale of debt relief that you can help engineer in the coming months, the coming year? Uh, yes. And with regard to grants, your point is exactly right. And uh, so as the World Bank looks at it, uh, the, of, of this $160 billion, a big chunk, uh, nearly a third, uh, is 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 grants, meaning not loans, but actually, and, and no interest on it, no repayment. Uh, and so that becomes a very strong, positive net flow for the countries. We're also trying to have, uh, or the, the, the G20 countries have agreed to a moratorium on repayments to their creditors. Um, what The biggest of that is China, uh, and it agreed to, and recently, uh, w within the last week, President Xi confirmed that China will fully participate in the moratorium. So in, in combination, that provides a big new chunk of available fiscal space for the countries to, we're talking about the 75 poorest countries in the world, it creates space for them to spend on 
health, the health emergency itself. So that's important. And what we need now is the commercial creditors uh, to also come in. That means the, the asset managers, the banks, uh, we're, we're dealing with the poorest countries in the world. And I, I think they need, they need to find a way that they can also accept a moratorium on the repayment stream so that there's more resources available for the countries. Everybody's working together. It's, uh, it's a sizable amount of money, but there's still quite a few steps to take uh, with regard to especially China and the commercial creditors to have them fully participate. Also, the Gulf states, I should mention that the, the Persian yeah. Gulf states have quite a bit of debt outstanding in the poorest countries, and there needs to be participation, full participation by them also in the debt moratorium. President Malpass, you have a unique position having visibility around the world, and I want to talk about China's presence as probably the dominant lender to developing nations over the past five years. I believe the estimates say that about $500 billion of loans uh, that China has extended to some of these countries. Do you have any sense of what that nation's debt forgiveness plan might look like and how that will pressure some of these nations? It's very important to the recovery of the of the poorest countries and and others um, that our President Xi uh, included those remarks uh, and it was very welcome in a speech that he gave. I guess it was two weeks ago uh, where he said China would fully participate. And you know, China is a member of the G20 countries which uh, endorsed this moratorium. So now we're at the point of implementation for. China's official creditor agencies. That's the China Development Bank, China Exim Bank. These are official agencies of the Chinese government, and they need to fully participate in the moratorium. And then the next level will be the commercial creditors. That's the banks in China, for example, that have that have lent a lot. And it's not just China. It's they're, they're one of many of the lenders uh, that uh, that are able to participate. And, and that gives them, I think there's going to be a two-way benefit. The poorest countries themselves are helped immensely uh, by this. But then the, the, uh, the lender countries will be creating a better environment for the future. And so I think, I'm hoping people will look to the longer run and see that if they participate now, there'll be, there'll be a better environment in the future for, for their markets, for their exports and things and so on.